Hey everyone, in a few of my latest parks I've uh, made one of these rides, it's, it's a, a star flyer attraction and if you want to build one of these in uh, OpenRC2 you'll have to do it yourself with some trickery. Now um, uh, this is based on an on a existing type of ride so normally uh, you would have to imagine that the, these seats are actually attached to these arms and uh, yeah, this middle part would rotate and then these cars would swing outwards and normally the ride would start with this uh, uh, middle section here uh, at the bottom so guests can get in and then uh, it would go to the top would uh, rotate uh, several times while uh, moving upwards and finally uh, it also uh, rotates uh, downwards anyway uh, some people like to make these rides uh, with this section staying uh, at the top and then uh, having the cars actually spiral up and down it's actually way more complicated to do it that way and I just prefer to, uh, to uh, make them this way uh, with the vehicles uh, staying in place like this and guests can simply get in from, uh, from uh, down here they will also exit without falling down anyway um, I think uh, this kind of ride is always uh, pretty spectacular to have in your park I think it's an easy way to uh, yeah to make something that really uh, catches the eye of your viewers. Anyway, um, in this uh, video I'm going to show you how to build one of these. Alright, um, to start off um, I usually begin with uh, a launched freefall ride. And that will just be uh, to make the tower for the ride. Now this ride doesn't actually need an entrance or an exit because it's not really uh, functional anyway this is just for uh, for looks now you can make this as tall as you like and yeah uh, I've seen some people uh, or I've seen uh, my original inspiration for this ride through Mavarium he also put some uh, uh, of these pieces that are used by the air powered vertical coaster some of these track pieces on the side you can uh, do this tower any way you like, but uh, I like to keep it simple and just use the launched freefall tower. Anyway, um, next up we'll want to uh, make the structure which houses has the or which the arms are attached to. Now I will just use blue, just because it's a uh, um, a color that stands out nicely. So. Uh, um, I should actually select blue if I say I'm using blue. All right. So I just put some of these pieces uh, on the uh, on the outside here. Now I do this for two uh, uh, levels like this. You can put it at any height. You can use different wall pieces. You can do uh, whatever you like here. This is just how I like to uh, to do it. Um, then I take some single rail coaster and I try to let me uh, disable the support limits and also uh, disable clearance checks all right then I will go here and I will build some uh, single rail coaster track out here I will go three out uh, you can make this bigger if you want um, I've seen people make them with uh, four track pieces like this that's really up to you now I will uh, build out two more and that's just so that I can uh, uh, build backwards and also create some sloped pieces like this. And we can do this on all four sides. Now I, I did just now I noticed a little mistake. Um, we'll want to have these uh, wall pieces here on the inside of the block, not on the outside. Or else these, uh, yeah, these track pieces will just clip uh, through it. So I'm now just placing them on the outside. So let me uh, remove these uh, pieces and I'll just uh, re quickly rebuild them. Now, uh, now we do this on all uh, four sides. So I will just uh, quickly do that. All right. Um, these pieces uh, are not actually touching now so if you want that you can always uh, lower these track pieces I think it uh, looks a bit nicer if you lower these uh, 
top slope track pieces by uh, by one unit. By the way, in the tile inspector, if you hold Control and if you then click on a track piece, you will immediately select that track piece. So that uh, might make it uh, a little bit faster for you. All right. Um, now um, I uh, also always uh, add some uh, diagonal arms as well. So I will just uh, create some uh, um, diagonal track here, uh, which will line up here in the middle. Now also for these diagonal pieces, I extend outwards a little bit more, and that allows me to put some uh, sloped uh, uh, diagonal pieces here as well. All right, now we have all the arms in place for the star flyer. Now for these uh, diagonal slope pieces, I typically just uh, leave them in place. You could make them a bit lower, but um, the top part where they connect, uh, it already looks a bit lower than uh, on this, these sides. So for here, I typically just leave them uh, as they are. Now for these arms, uh, you'll probably want to hide these uh, supports. So. Um, yeah, just select this tile and uh, move everything um, below the surface. And that should get rid of these uh, supports here. Alright, the next thing uh, you'll want to do is to make a track, which will make invisible later, for your uh, cars to run on. So. Yeah, you can use any track. Um, for this example, I will just use looping roller coaster track. Um, I will just put it somewhere under here. I think this is probably a good distance. And we'll just take the wide turn, then a straight piece, and another wide turn, and a straight piece, wide turn, and a straight piece, another wide turn. Okay, um, I'm going to m actually move it uh, a little bit up. So I'll just use apply changes to entire track piece. I think this height will look better. But yeah, just uh, try to find a height that uh, that you think uh, looks best. All right, uh, we will make this track invisible later. Um, now. Now we will start the, uh, making the actual ride which the trains will run on. So for that uh, I always like to use the Steel Wild Mouse, but you can use any track. The reason I like to use the Steel Wild Mouse is it has uh, really tight uh, turns, so it's very easy to build it to exactly to where you want it to be. So um, I typically make the station uh, right over here, and this ride uh, will also have the entrance and the exit for the guests. Now I will uh, move these later. So for now um, I will just make them invisible. So that it will be easier to see what we are doing. Now what we'll have to do is we'll have to connect this track to this looping coaster track and then merge it so that the trains um, or that the cars from this track will go to the looping coaster track later. And we'll also want to put some chain lift on this track so that the trains can actually go here. Alright, um, as you can see I've built some track uh, over here that goes to the exact height of the looping coaster track. And over here on this straight piece um, I built uh, another piece of uh, straight um, steel wild mouse coaster track. And as you can see the tracks have now merged. It doesn't allow me um, to build any further. Now in the tile inspector I will now select this track piece over here. And what we'll want to see is that um, for this track piece over here, um, we have a merge here, and the trains will go to the track that's uh, that's the lowest on the same tile. So over here, we have the looping roller coaster uh, straight track piece and the steel wild mouse straight track piece. The looping roller coaster track piece is uh, 
below the other one. You can see that uh, over here if I change the height. So that means the train will go to the looping coaster track. And that's exactly what we want. Alright, um, next up uh, we'll need to make a control track. Um, I always like to make these underground um, so it's uh, yeah, so it's easier to hide. So I'm just deleting this first track piece that leads upwards. And I'm going to make an underground track here. No, I will press H, which uh, removes the uh, floor. Alright, I just placed a few uh, straight track pieces here on the ground and that will make it easier for us to merge uh, into this uh, track. Anyway, I'm going to... Uh, we're going to build the underground track later. Uh, what we need first, um, before we forget, is we need some track to actually spawn our uh, trains on. Now I'm going to make it a little bit above the ground, but you could make straight track here, uh, whatever you prefer. Now for this particular ride, it doesn't really need to be too long. But uh, if you have a shoestring ride that has many vehicles, then uh, you may need a, a long uh, track behind the station to actually be able to spawn all the vehicles. Anyway, um, I will quickly uh, rebuild this track here that we deleted. And now this ride is actually done. Okay, now I'm going to build the control track that uh, will be underground. So uh, once again, I will remove the floor and I'm going to make a station for this control track, um, which is at the same height as this uh, straight track here that's underground. I'll make the station exactly under the existing one. And for the underground track, I will use chain lift on all track pieces except for the station. So I'm just going to make a 180 degree turn here. Over here, I'm going to make a straight track piece that's exactly on the other straight track piece. And now they should be uh, merged. Now I'm immediately going to check with the tile inspector that um, the trains here will go to the correct track piece. So um, yeah, the lowest track piece here, which is uh, right over here on this tile. Um, we can see there's a wooden wild mouse goes to track piece and a steel wild mouse uh, goes to track piece exactly on the same place. Uh, we want the trains to go to the wooden wild mouse uh, um, track. So we move the wooden wild mouse track below the steel one and now um, yeah the trains should uh, go to the wooden valve mouse track okay um, this ride moves pretty fast so I'm going to make uh, quite a long uh, control track on the ground here for this ride the longer you make this uh, control track uh, the longer the ride duration will be Alright, and when you think the ride track is long enough, uh, you simply uh, return back to the underground station. Uh, the underground station uh, doesn't actually need an entrance or an exit. Alright, um, let's quickly rename our ride. So the underground track, I will name it uh, Starflyer Control Track. I will name this ride uh, Star Flyer Tower. I will name this ride the Looping Coaster uh, Star Flyer Track. And our Steel Wild Mouse here, that's going to be our actual ride, so this will be the Star Flyer. And this will be the ride that will be boarded by the guests. Now, for the actual ride, we uh, actually need the correct vehicles. Uh, so for this, um, we'll need to enable some cheats, um, show vehicles from other track types, and disable vehicle limits. And for this ride, we'll want to have the swinging floorless cars. So let me see if I can find them. So here they are, um, swinging floorless cars. We'll want to have one train. And I typically go with uh, 
17 cars per train because uh, there will be one car uh, underground and I usually put 16 uh, up here now we only have eight arms up here but I usually also just put a vehicle uh, in between uh, these arms so I guess you'll have to pretend that there's more arms up here you could also just go with uh, uh, nine cars per train if you just want one of these uh, one of these vehicles per arm and one underground but uh, that's really up to you I always like to go with uh, 17 all right um, if I try to open the right now it will not be able to open because it's in uh, uh, continuous circuit mode so we'll have to enable another cheat which is show all operating modes now I always like to use just to use uh, powered launch without passing station I also have to uh, unlock operating limits I usually set a low launch speed but that's not really uh, necessary all right um, what I want now is for um, when I spawn the the train I want the first vehicle to go uh, on this underground track and I want the other uh, 16 vehicles to stay up here and uh, go around forever so if I test the ride now then the train should spawn so I uh, test it immediately closed it you can see the train spawn now okay I'm going to put the ride in test mode and I'm pausing the game as soon as the uh, first vehicle makes it onto this track so uh, I think it's uh, on enough uh, on this track now it should continue to go down so what I do now is I go in the tile inspector and for this tile over here I switch the order of these two track pieces so when I do that the rest of the train should go up right um, so this uh, track piece at height 11 that's actually the track piece that goes downwards and the one at 14 is actually the one that goes upwards so if I swap these around then the rest of the train should go upwards there we go so you can see uh, um, car one now on this underground track and the rest of the train should continue up and then move towards the looping coaster track I will uh, close the ride now just so that uh, the train stops once uh, car one has reached the station here and after that I'm going to space out these uh, trains I think we can also uh, already uh, increase the um, lift hill chain speed I think the final speed will be somewhere around uh, 30 kilometers per hour all right the train is now uh, waiting over here and what we can do now is uh, space out these uh, cars on the track here just so that it looks like all of each of these cars is uh, suspended on one of these arms now for that uh, we're going to need the uh, right vehicle editor plugin I'll leave a link to it in the video description so here it is edit ride vehicles and uh, we'll have to select uh, star flyer and now I'm just going to move uh, all these vehicles so that they're either under an arm or uh, yeah exactly in between two of these arms now this can be a little bit finicky but I'll just try to do it uh, as uh, good as possible All right, I think they're spaced out well enough now. Um, so this uh, looping coaster track uh, with the allow arbitrary ride type changes sheet, I'm going to change it into a crooked house and that will make the track invisible. And for this uh, star flyer ride itself, um, I will change it into a lift. That will also make the track invisible but uh, the other positive uh, side is that it changes the ride into a transport ride and guests will ride a transport ride uh, regardless of its stats uh, if it's free so that's always a good idea to uh, do for your uh, shoestring rides anyway let's give it a test 
Now the space between these vehicles is not exactly the same now everywhere. Uh, of course, I did it quite uh, quickly now. Uh, you can probably uh, change the um, chain lift speed a little bit. For that, just change it to a coaster and then you can uh, change its speed. Wait, this is uh, what our ride looks like now. Anyway, um, I will just quickly test it to see if it actually uh, generates stats. And if it doesn't, um, we'll have to make a little modification to the to the track. All right, uh, looks like the ride actually generates uh, stats. So that's a, that's a good thing. Now, if the ride doesn't generate any stats, what you will have to do is... Um, let's change the ride back to a steel wild mouse. If it doesn't generate any stats, the best thing to do is just take one of these track pieces that leads to this infinite loop and just select it in the tile inspector and we're just gonna move it upwards or uh, downwards. But yeah, just so that's out of the way. And then if you close the ride and then reopen it, then it should generate stats again. Okay, um, I'm going to change this ride into a lift. And now, um, yeah, this ride, you'll probably also want to give it a platform. Now, there's many ways to do this. You could just use um, uh, blocks, uh, just use base blocks, landscaping, uh, whatever you want. Um, for these rides, I typically like to use uh, flying saucer track. So here we have the flying saucer track. I typically just place uh, a ride somewhere around, around here, somewhere in the neighborhood. I like these because you can make them nice and colorful. Now with the tile inspector I'll make these track pieces here uh, invisible. Uh, some of these uh, ride supports may pop up again. So just, uh, just uh, move them under surface and then the supports will disappear. Yeah, I like to use a flying saucer track to make a platform for this ride. So I'll just copy and paste some of these pieces here. Now I typically make this uh, ride uh, seven. This is ride platform uh, seven wide. But yeah, of course uh, the platform size that you uh, end up using depends on uh, how large you make uh, the top section. And I like to make them square, but uh, you could go for uh, an octagon or uh, or try to make a circle. That's really up to you. Now, uh, we're not actually finished yet. Um, we still need to make, uh, st we still need to move the entrance and the exit of this ride. So uh, once again, I'm selecting uh, the Starflyer ride itself, the one that actually spawned the vehicles. Let me actually quickly give the tower a color. So uh, yeah, the Starflyer ride, um, I made the entrance and exit invisible earlier, but if I make them visible again, now here you can see them. Um, yeah, I don't want to connect a queue path and a path uh, to the entrance and the exit while they're over here. Uh, the entrance and exit can be anywhere um, uh, anywhere you want them to be on this height. So I'm just going to uh, take this entrance, I'm copying it, and yeah, I will p just paste it uh, over here. I will uh, r delete the original one and I will select this one again and I press the make usable button. What this does is uh, for a moved entrance, the make usable button uh, makes it so that the ride will actually use this entrance. I will do the same for this exit. I think I'll uh, place it over here. I'll press the make usable button and I will delete this one. Now this platform uh, also looks a, a little bit silly because there's a fence here. So I will just remove this platform piece. I will do the same for this platform piece and I will replace it with uh, one of these that doesn't have any fences next to it. Alright and then you can uh, simply make a queue path for this ride and you can also connect the exit to it. I always like to just make a queue around the ride since usually you'll have some uh, space there and now we can connect it to the main path. 
Now, as for uh, this ride, um, you can simply dele delete these track pieces if you don't want to use them anymore, or you can just make them uh, invisible. All right, now uh, let's uh, spawn in some guests and uh, sh show them uh, riding this. Oh wait, there's just one more thing that uh, I should probably do. Um, there's no guests in the ride yet, so that's good. Uh, with the ride vehicle editor, we're gonna look for vehicle one of this ride, which is underground. And it says two seats, we're going to change it to zero. And what this does is uh, now guests will not be able to ride this underground uh, vehicle. Probably something you'll want to uh, prevent. All right, um, I'm just going to spawn in some guests and then we're gonna watch them uh, ride this star flyer. So large tram, let's make them happy. And let's open up this ride. All right, you can see the guests uh, enter this ride. They will just walk on this flying saucer track. Let me make this uh, invisible. I usually also put some fences here. Um, quite often I use some of these mesh fences with a little gate in them. But uh, you can also you can decorate this uh, however you like. And now you can actually see some guests uh, riding this uh, this star flyer. Now normally all guests that enter this queue uh, should actually uh, go into it, but these guests are packed together so tightly that uh, as soon as they enter the queue, I think it, to them it looks like the queue is full because uh, <laughs> there's always uh, someone uh, yeah, entering. Probably because these guests all have the same uh, exact same energy. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the ride is now uh, full and it looks like it's uh, working. So yeah, it's always a good spectacular ride to add in your park, I think. It fills up quite a large area. I think it will look uh, great in, uh, in any park. And it's definitely an, uh, an uh, eye catcher. All right, um, yeah. Hope this uh, tutorial is useful for you. I uh, hope to see you uh, actually be able to build one of these in your parks. Uh, yeah, if the tutorial is useful for you, please consider giving this video a like, or if you just liked the, the video. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you still have any questions uh, about this. And of course, you can also always ask for help on my Discord server. I'm sure there's uh, plenty of people who are willing to help you if you're trying to build one of these. Right, hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you again in the next one. See you later.